Okay, section uh, 4.6 continued. We're doing the example number 38 here at the bottom. If it is 27 degrees Celsius to the nearest degree, what is the temperature in Fahrenheit? So I've already placed in here the degrees Celsius and I've given us our formula for degrees Fahrenheit um, for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. That is nine-fifths the Celsius degrees plus 32. So all I have to do in order to solve for the degrees Fahrenheit I, is substitution. So this says 9 fifth times whatever my Celsius degrees are and my Celsius degrees are 27 in this instance and then I'm going to add 32 to that. So I have um, 9 fifths of 27 so I'm going to multiply 27 times 9 so 9 times 7 which is 63 and I'll carry the 6 and 18 plus 6 which is 24 and that's 254 and those are fifths and then plus 30, uh, 32 and I'm going to make those into fifths as well so this is over 1 so this was times 5 and so this is times 5 as well 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1, and 15 plus 1, which is 16. And now I'm going to go ahead and add these, and I'm going to carry along the common denominator, 0 plus 3, which is 3, 6 plus, 9, or 6 plus 4, which is 10, and carry the 1 again, and 1 plus 1 plus 2, which is 4. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide that by 5, so 5 goes into 48 times, eight, 5 will go into 3, 0 times, with 3 left over and that's 80 and 3 fifths and so if I'm rounding this to um, the nearest degree as it says nearest degree there I'm gonna have approximately 80 and um, um, 81 degrees because 3 fifths is 0. 0.6 remember and so this is another way of saying this is 80.6 and that means of course I'm rounding up so 81 degrees and this is Fahrenheit and that's what I'll go ahead and box. So that's just a matter of substitution. All right, now moving on to our next problem, um, which is solving a, an equation when more than one variable exists. And our major um, topic in this section is really putting equations in slope-intercept form. But what we want to do is we want to focus on the variable that we're solving for. And then we're going to use our skills of solving a linear equation um, for um, the variable that we used before. What is added to that variable of focus? And we're going to undo that with addition, what's multiplied by it, and undo that with, by a multiplication property. So let's take a look at our first example here. T is equal to m n r. And you see I've highlighted the n so that we can see what we're solving for. So what this really looks like is t is equal to, and I'm going to use the commutative associative property here to say mr times, and then that variable of interest, I'm going to put that down uh, in red so I can keep a track of, uh, take, keep track of it. And that I see is going to say this number, whatever it is, times that n. So I want to get rid of that number. Well, it's multiplied by it, so I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal, mr, and I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal over here as well, using the multiplication property, which is going to show me that my n that I was after is equal to t divided by this m times r. And that's it. That's how I solve for n. Now we're going to do that one more time again down here for y. Now this time I want to solve for y. See it's highlighted. So this 3x is being added to this y. So I want to undo that. I want to add 3x's opposite to both sides. So I'm going to add it to both sides here and here. And now I'm going to see that my y is equal to negative 3x and then plus 7. The thing that we want to make sure that we don't do is we don't want to combine unlike terms. Negative 3x and 7, those are totally different types. We don't know what this number negative 3x is. This x is like holding up an index card and I have a number on the back of it and you're guessing what it is. You can't tell me what negative 3 times that number is and then add 7 to it. So don't confuse that. Don't try to add negative 3x and positive 7. You want to just leave it just as it is. That's a perfectly acceptable answer. y is equal to negative 3x plus 7. All right, we'll continue this solving in the next uh, lecture set. We have part C and D to continue on, and then we have example number 40 as well.